didn't expect. I started asking people about the election. And then when we decided to put my family in the film to represent, you know, the people who were being pointed at in the media, it just made sense for me to be there, of course. I mean, I was sitting at the kitchen table the way that I will sit with them when I go home in December when we're not filming. Um, so even at that point, I wasn't, and we didn't know that I was going to ultimately be narrating and that we were gonna have to lay this whole foundation for who I was and what my relationship was to the place. So uh, that was not my intention. It was a tremendous blind spot, I think, of mine that you know we didn't get to that sooner because it was years later. I mean, we're talking three, three and a half years later. So, um, you know, but of course I want to, I mean, I'm able to work as a filmmaker and a journalist, but also as a human being, first and foremost, in those scenes. and. You know, that's what it's always about for me as a director, as a producer. I mean, you're human and you want to respect people and listen and be compassionate, irrespective of, you know, how you may disagree with what they think. Thanks. Thanks for your kind words, Derek. They were beautiful scenes. I really felt for your grandmother about her not getting out of the town and you living her dream. That was a beautiful moment. Um, I don't want to hog the Q&A, so I want to open it up to questions. Um, um, first, I just I do want to, I just want to mention Sally is a professor at Chapman University where I used to work for eleven years. That's how we know each other. And I'm sure how, how your students reacted to this film. Have they seen it? Because I you you know you've got a great example there for them to follow. You know you know how to make a great documentary. So how, what has their response been? Oh, well, thanks, Derek. Um, I have shown it. I've shown it in both of my classes this semester for different reasons. And um, amazingly, they really, really love it. They cry. Young people really love the film. We showed it in Georgia a few weeks ago um, to about 200 freshmen, mainly freshmen college students. And they laughed. They laughed in all the right places. They cried. They were moved. Um, some of my students wanted to see the film again. Could they come to my next class to see it again? So I think there's something that's really um, empowering for young people about a film that whose message is basically be proud of who you are. Billy's always saying he's proud to be a hillbilly. He's proud to be from the mountains. So own that. Own who you are. Um, and you know what? We don't have to be so divided. We can listen. We can learn to talk, even if it's just in the microcosm of our family. I mean, ironically, when we went to film Ashley and put Ashley um, into the movie, I mean, I was there with her, was sort of pushing her, wanting her to really confront her family as much as she could, knowing of course that Ashley's just a respectful person. It was never gonna, this was never gonna be a reality TV type thing. But you know, wanting her to push, and Ashley listens, basically, I and mean, that's what she does. And ultimately, I think that that's the lesson of the movie, is that we need to listen to each other more. So you know, we never could have um, guessed that that kind of message would be so needed at the time that the film actually came out, but that's how it's landing, especially with young people. But for the record, I did speak about misogyny in that scene. We just cut it because, you know, this movie's very long. Um, you know, I really did want to get that in because it did link to that spelling early on, and that would have been a really nice connection. Um, and again, you know, like, if we make Hillbilly 2, I think there'll be some different, you know, there'll definitely be some different interactions there because it's, you know, it's a different time now. But. Okay, I'm going to have a hard time seeing hands out there because the lights are so bright. I see one right here in the front. She did. When did you see it and what was her reaction to the film? So do you want us to repeat the question? Did, did everyone hear that in the back? No. So when was the first time the grandmother saw the film and what was her reaction and what she thought yeah. of it? Grand Shelby came to the Nashville Film Festival in May of this year. She went to the Trump rally that happened that you see in the movie before that, and then the Nashville Film Festival. She had a great time. I mean, she was there on the red carpet. Bobby was there, Chandler. I mean, she like, got a standing ovation. She got a standing ovation. She was the well of the ball after the movie. She really was. I didn't see her because she was surrounded by people. Um, you know, and I think she she's delighted by the film. I think it's completely unexpected to her, you know, that her story is getting told and that all that flood footage that she shot all those years and stockpiled on this VHS tape that you know we happen to dig out you know I think that's you know 
moving for her. I mean, her health is failing, certainly, as, as the months go on. So um, she's not able to get out a whole lot now. I think ultimately, too, I mean, one of the things we really tried to do was have the film feel like it was making a statement, but also not feel overly partisan. Ashley's a huge Clinton supporter, um, you know, and that, that sort of feminist voice is really very much in the movie. But we also, we show places where Clinton or the Democratic Party made mistakes and ways that Trump um, capitalized on that. So if you're a Trump supporter watching the movie, I think, you know, some people feel that there's really, um, that it was really a fair treatment. We were scared. I mean, I was scared of what Granny and your family would think, but yeah. they, they loved it. We have a question right over here. I live in Clayton, Georgia. In Georgia, okay. My mom is from the Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee, um, and my, my whole family lives in North Carolina, and Tennessee has lived there since the early 1600s. I grew up in Boston, though, and um, I lived there for 25 years, lived in a, a town of, that was a mix of working class Irish and Italian, and then mid and upper class Jews. And I, I just saw right there in my community way that, um, you know, the mid to upper class kids put down the, the poor kids and called them trashy rednecks. Um, hillbillies wasn't a term we used, but there were a lot of slang terms, and I just never understood why that was accepted when other kind of terms weren't. Billy, how long have you lived in Georgia? All my life. And you, and you love it there? Yeah, I do. So when you've done your other movie roles after, because you've had some cameos and some other films since Deliverance, do they just fly you out to Hollywood? What's that like? Yeah, they did. <laughs> I thought my dream came true. But, but now, Atlanta is the new hot spot for filmmaking, the new Hollywood. So what do they call it, Yollywood? Yollywood? Um, yeah. So are you... Going, are you going out for auditions for any more films, or what are you doing right now? Uh, I don't really know right now. <laughs> Billy does have some special merchandise that he should tell you about that he has with him tonight. Um, that I want to make sure we don't forget. Yep. It's okay. limited offer tonight. You want to tell them what you have? Did you bring some of the photos? Yeah, I did got some photos left in my pop, in my room. I have to go get them. If anyone's interested in buying them, they're twenty-five dollars a piece. <laughs> and um, the money that I take in on this is going to go for the Children's Nickel Network. I believe it's the photo that's featured in the movie, right, Billy, where you're sitting on the porch playing yeah. the banjo opposite Ronnie Cox. Yeah. And that's so in the In the whole side. Yeah, and this charity Billy was telling me about it, it's part of, I think it's part of Walmart where Billy still works. Full time. Every week? Yeah, I work there every day. <laughs> okay, any other hands out there? Sir, I was going to ask Billy, I mean, congratulations on the film, it was great. But Billy, were you chosen for this role because you could play the banjo? Were you chosen for the role Yes. Well, you did a great job. Well, thank you. Thank you. There's a hand Showcases a great 
um, lots of great ways that it's happening. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, maybe some more specific ways that we could promote um, that sort of interface. Interfacing specifically between um, scholars and thinkers in the region, or? Yeah, I mean, I think that we can all um, challenge ourselves to work in communities that we don't always have access to, to explore new spaces, to, um, you know, live in urban environments, to get into rural environments. I mean, we don't have like a, you know, a list of things that we're giving to folks to do that, but I think that, um, you know, exploring new endeavors in these communities is, is so meaningful and important. I always like to share, I don't know if this is really related to your question, but I always like to share about um, some of the, some of the um, projects and initiatives that are going on in the region now to sort of help better it. We often get the question, you know, if the coal jobs are gone, what's going to happen there? There's this amazing movement called the STAY Project. Have you guys heard of this? It's throughout um, Appalachia, or there in Kentucky in particular, where young people are really working to educate um, themselves and others about the importance of staying and not having this brain drain issue and um, you know creating all kinds of really cool movements local and organic movements and um, also really embracing a lot of the latino communities who've immigrated in there in the past decade or so and just all kinds of really cool new initiatives that you know that are being made to get people to stay and invest in that project take pride in it um, Sam leaves the young banjo player here who calls himself a fabulation. He's a perfect example of one of these young people who really embrace that identity of a mountain person and a hillbilly and are um, deciding to stay and have their life there and be queer and get to do it all. So, yeah, tribute to those organizations. Do you have Do you have links or more information on a website or how about the website for Hillbilly the film? Hillbillymovie.com. You can email us there. We're very responsive. We have a mailing list we can add you to. We have a Facebook page. Um, more details will be revealed soon about our distribution and the future line of the movie. We do have a limited theatrical run in New York City starting the day after Thanksgiving. So if you know anyone in uh, New York City who's interested in coming out for that week, um, it'll be on four or five times a day for one week. It sounds like Silas House might be coming if anyone wants to over the dishy Silas has in person. Any other questions? Oh, okay. I'm just wondering how your um, concept of the film changed when Trump was elected, because um, and if you had intended all the time for that to be the ending of the film, and what would have changed if Hillary had won? Well, we would have had, my, my dream ending was a square dance with Bell Hooks and Silas House and Sally and me and everybody, all the fabulous actions, you know, celebrating Hillary. And we thought, well, that would be kind of boring because that's what's going to happen and it won't be a surprise. And, you know, that was really our state of mind that day until about 9 o'clock Eastern time when that New York Times poll dropped, you know, to like 5%. Um, and, you know, we've been following that all day. So, I mean, we were completely, or I was completely blind to the fact that it was going to go the way that it did. So, you know, here we are after we filmed all this stuff. Like, what are we going to do with this? This is bigger than the election. We didn't want that to take over. So, you know, and then it took a way to finish. Like, we were at the point in the production when we just, we were, you know, we had exhausted our resources for production. We had to just finish the edit. So we didn't really have a choice, and that was the most dramatic thing that happened during the process of making the film. So from a narrative standpoint, it makes sense to do that. But I wish that we would have had the benefit of, you know, maybe six more months, you know, to just sort of let us understand, let me understand as the narrator of this film, the racial elements and some things that I just wish the film was able to push, you know, a little, little more. But it will be too. This is a really interesting question. I really never thought about how the movie had been different if Clinton had won. I mean, I think in some ways it just would have been the movie that we'd already been making. Um, it wouldn't have been so relevant politically, certainly. I mean, it becomes relevant politically because Trump wins and the divide. Um, it becomes so clear the mistakes that we can see. So, you know, I think it would have been, the movie we were making already was the movie where Appalachian 
Republicans felt disempowered by media connections, um, and Democrats had been putting them down. And then, then the politics of the election became so much more relevant. So yeah, it actually would have been, it would have been a different movie. I mean, until then, it was really a movie about media representation, and, and then also about alternate Appalachian identities, the Babylonians, the Appalachicanos, the Appalachians, um, all these sort of other identities that we bring in there, but it wasn't much about politics and the election until he won. Any other questions? One about Karen. What's your uh, take on like modern portrayal of uh, hillbillies or mountain people culture and media like complex characters? You had some examples like uh, the movie The Coal Miner's Daughter or other like, Do you want to hear that? You mean like what positive portraits yeah, are there? Like, if you see any change in that one, you know, like Ozark or justified examples like those. I mean, everybody told me to watch Justified for so long that we were making this, and I finally watched it. And first of all, I could tell that the mountains were Orange County mountains. I mean, I recognized those mountains from Orange County, California. It wasn't shot here. Second of all, the accents were Texan accents. So it was, I mean, it was hard for me to take that show very seriously. Um, I think basically it just promotes more of the idea that Appalachians are violent feuding even though it may be a fun story to watch. But people, Silas talks about um, October Sky as being a pretty positive representation. And, um, and the Adriani, Trigiani film, I forget the name of it, it wasn't a very high profile film. Sadly, and I still don't think there are that many really positive well, representations. Dolly Parton's coming back with the 9 to 5 sequel. We'll get more of her. <laughs> oh, this gentleman here has a question. There was a character uh, in the movie uh, who was quite disheartened by the results of the election. Uh, and I wondered how it, the results of the election affected your, he seemed to be sort of disappointed in rural Appalachia, uh, since much of it did vote for Trump. But uh, how, how did you feel afterwards? And did you feel uh, about the fact that Appalachia basically supported Trump and still does? Right, well, um at that time, I did share Solace's sentiment, right? I mean, it was very easy to point fingers and to, you know, realize that, you know, this, um, you know, national disaster, in my opinion, like, it had happened. Um, but, you know, of course, like, in the days that follow, we learned that a lot more people than we thought voted for Trump. I mean, I thought women were going to be the silent majority, and I didn't realize that women don't cross the party line, though. You know, it's like if you're a Republican, you're most likely to vote that way. I mean, 54% of white women voted for Donald Trump, and I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that 60 million people in this country were going to vote for him, and that 4 million Californians were going to vote for him. Like, I mean, I too thought it's just Kentuckians, it's just these rural folks, but uh-uh. You know, people voted for whiteness, and they voted for someone because they were very rich. And, you know, that was something that was just not foreseeable at that time, which is why, you know, I made the comment that it would have been great to have a little more time so that we weren't so pressed from a production standpoint to just finish it already. You know, I mean, I think it would have taken it a, a deeper, you know, one step a little bit deeper, so. Yes, I'm very upset by this. Please, I know I'm very cool and calm, but like it's really, it's really tough. Like it's really awful. Billy, what do you, what do you think of the film? What are your thoughts? I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. <coughs> I know that they do right here put a bit of hard work into it and make it all come true. Okay, so I think I think we'll wrap it up. But thank you so much for bringing your film to start our festival. And um, tell all your friends about the film. Go to hillbillythemovie.com. Hillbillymovie.com. Hillbillymovie. And join us at the after party. Where is it, Jen? Ozark Bathhouse. Ozark Bathhouse. Thank you.